friend. Friend, I ask you to partake with us of the fellowship of Isis in the performance of our mystery drama, Isis of 10,000 names. That drama that we performed in the United States, in Chicago, at the Parliament of the World's Religion. It only occurs every hundred years. Anoint your brow with water. Now rise with me at the time of midsummer, summer solstice, on the longest day, whatever your time takes, come back to us. Yet we belong to all time. You hover above your own place and come back to the land of Inish home. You look down and you see a light in the southeastern corner between two rivers set in a circle of hills, watched over by the blue mount Leinster. The sun here is midday and a great concourse of people await at the foot of a long avenue of lime trees. They gaze ahead and a quarter of a mile distance at the end of the avenue is an ancient grey castle over which hangs and flies in the light breeze the flag of the goddess Cybele who wears a castellated crown, yellow on blue. Let us see as the procession makes its way up this avenue of mighty lime trees, who they are. Priestesses and priests wear priestly regalia in gold and silver. The priestesses wear Isian crowns, ancient Egypt, and hold wands. The priests wear onic headdresses and hold crooks. We see a whole crowd of people, some robed with the sacred Palace. Mercury is yellow, Venus green, Mars red, Jupiter blue, Saturn black, Uranus grey, Neptune purple, and Pluto in red of indigo as a guardian. And we see they are followed by two candidates representing Earth and Moon in Earth colour and white. Now we see twelve companions representing the twelve signs of the zodiac in various brilliant Aries and scarlet, Taurus and green, Gemma, yellow, Cancer, violet, Leo, orange, Virgo, corn color, Libra, jade green, Scorpio, crimson, Sagittarius, sapphire blue, Capricorn, black, Aquarius, sky blue, Pisces, turquoise green. But what is lovely is all those who are following, and there are about altogether 110 people, are wearing the different colors of their own zodiac. Sign, and children are following also robed and wearing flowery headdresses. We follow this procession until we reach the castle itself. A guardian stands at the head of the steps. A priest, a, the archpriest, steps forward and addresses the company. Companions, we seek harmony, reuniting justice and compassion. We are assembled to seek peace for our earth. We repent of the follies wrought by mankind upon earth, creatures and men. We would face the judgment of the Cyrus, that we may learn what we may do to restore the balance of nature. We seek the compassion of Isis, so that we may forgive others and ourselves. Here, the procession heads for an ancient ruined abbey, the Abbey of Dharma, where there is an altar set up, and the priest offers incense at the altar and raises his star. I offer incense to thee, Osiris, judge of the living and the dead. Only when we save thee, may we bring our earth and ourselves to new birth. Grant us thy erection. Now we see it on the side of the dolmen altar, two figures, one robed 
house Isis, bearing the great Isian crown, a throne, and Osiris, wearing the high white headdress and holding the crook of the sail while Isis holds an air. This priest gives the oracle of Osiris, and some may see shining light descending upon him. My son, know that there are four judgments, the divine decree of the all-knowing deities, the judgment of your peers, the judgment of those under your authority, and your own assessment of yourself. The judgment of the gods you accept with awe and humility. Your mind and heart are deeply affected by the judgment of your family and friends be disliked by humble folk, children and animals as painful. But what hurts you to the quick is to look into a mirror and hate what you find therein. You call upon me to advise you on your situation, and that I shall do when you meditate. But it rests with your companions and you yourself, what you do with the knowledge given. All receive this oracle of gratitude for its inherent wisdom. The first priest offers formal thanks. We give thanks to what Osiris for his oracle. Now a faithful step forward and offers incense and raises her wand. Holy goddess Isis, loving daughter, wife, mother, we know what it is to be human. Our hearts fail when we see the destruction we have brought upon rainforests, oceans, animals. For we strive to undo the harm wrought by man because of conscience and duty. Yet we need your hope and joy to give us the heart of perseverance. Without you we would relapse into inertia and despair. Restore unto us thy oracle. And the company gaze upon the oracle. It is to be bestowed upon us by the goddess Isis through her daughter. Happy am I that you turn to me even at this eleventh hour. Know that my compassion is within your own cells. When you are angry at cruelty and greed, this is love changed to hatred. When you feel despair, this is because you once knew heaven. When you cease to feel, this is because you have once felt too much. Do not be afraid of your feelings. It is through your respect for honor and justice that Osiris brings true judgment to earth. For without justice, peace becomes weakness. But it is your love that brings ecstasy. Even if you live in a cardboard city, a polluted slum, a famine-stricken arid desert, even could you open your hearts to me between two seconds, you know well that all is well in eternal reality. Then you will see clearly how to bring this shadow earth into its true being, the land of heart's desire. Know that peace and justice are one, perfection and nature are one, Osiris and Isis are one. It is so that hand in fact. Priestess, the arch priestess, We give thanks to Isis for her oracle. First priest is stuck with wand and offers incense. That justice and peace be will upon earth, we need to invoke the sovereign sun. Homage to thee, O Ra, when thou rises in beauty. Who passes over the high of heaven, and thy heart is filled with gladness. The Zahra boat draws on, and thou advances in thy utter boat with fair wind. 
grant that we may be among thy favorite followers. O Lord of beauty, bring us in thy boat of millions of years into thy everlasting habitation. The arch priestess offers incense to the altar, makes the sign of paper with her wand. Come amongst us, O Hathor, who wear it and come upon thy horned head. Mother Goddess, who dwellest in the visible heaven, source and ruler of all, help us to bring harmony to our earth, that we may enjoy thy gift bearing. Who hast created the world and all that it containeth, who thine own unaided force and energy, who has created the power of life within us, give us thy strength, that we may use it for good. Now, Lord Stanley Robertson, the Archpriest, gives thanks to the deities for their blessings. He gives thanks. Four lovely priestesses and therefore very young carrying silver bowls of water representing Pisces, Aquarius, and Cancer, for a most bar of all passion. Dearest friend, receive true vision. May your inner eye be awakened. May your eye be awakened. See, see clearly. They move among the people. The other people are also among the flowers. If there are so many people, feel the silvery glow within your own forest so that you may see the sheep, the people of the elements, joining in. How beautiful! We can see the aura around these flowering shrubs and roses. The whole of this holy temple is filled with roses, wild roses. The flowers feel joyful within you. Hear the birds and the trees. The sun burns even in midday, and the white cat is moving among us. This is a time of rejoicing, mid-time. However, the most important part of the ceremony takes place. In stately movement, the two members of the priesthood who gave the oracle, having recovered from trance, stand up. They are to enact the mighty ceremony of open. And the goddess and god exchange power. People are suddenly tense in the full glory of the crown of ancient Egypt, the pharaoh, the priest advances before the altar. The priestess, regal as Isis, faces him, his royal wife. They face each other. Now people are aware power coming down from the sun in an aureole like a rainbow. They place the palms of their hands an inch apart, the hands, and some can see the power begin, begin to build up between their hands. Now we see what's happening, and which many thought that the Parliament of Religion, a golden sphere, a golden bowl, is being formed between their hands. They begin to draw their hands apart, and this sphere of divine light begins to expand. Now they turn and direct it to the whole company and to all beings. She who enacts the path of Isis calls that all beings may be blessed. 
Now the priest, as a psalm, sends forth this blessing to all. Let this blessing shine forth in all the nations of the earth, and all the tribes under the sun. Now the whole company lift up their hands. We are all sons and daughters of the deity, and all send forth their blessings. Lord Stan Robertson asked that all beings be blessed. All beings be blessed. May all beings be blessed. May all beings be blessed. May all beings of existence be blessed. And all the company, some of them are too shy to speak out. The children are quite shouting. It's such a happy occasion. Now, the one enacting the part of Osiris calls upon the company. <clears throat> I call upon the company. Let us intone the sacred name of Isis of the sacred planet. Each attuned to one of the seven cosmic rays of creation. Yes, these cosmic rays are greater than any planet. They pervade the universe. Mars is called. I call upon Morrigan of Irie, goddess of Mars. Morrigan. I call upon Quan Jin of China, goddess of Venus. Quan Jin. I call upon Sophia of Byzantium, goddess of Mercury. upon Ruth of Egypt, goddess of Jupiter. I call upon Astarte of Assyria, goddess of Saturn. Astarte. I call upon Parasvati of India. Goddess of Uranus. I call upon Rami of Africa, Goddess of Neptune. May the music of your differing rays be brought into harmony through the dance of the planet. Now all dance cheerfully. In, they dance out of the altar and away from you and round and dance in an enormous circle. All the people wait at our side. Join us. Dance. Dance. Spread the rays of happiness, joy, and love yourself. Let the seven sacred names of Isis of the Zodiac be imposed. I invoke Calidian of Wales, goddess of Pisces. I invoke Durga of India, goddess of Aries. I invoke Maya of South America, goddess of Taurus. I invoke a claim in the hall of Hela, goddess and god of Gemini. I invoke the Amat of 
Babylon, what is our transfer? I invoke the men of Egypt, goddess of Leo. I invoke Dawn of Era, goddess of Jericho. I invoke Tara of Southeast Asia, goddess of Libra. I invoke Ama Teresu of Japan, goddess of Scorpio. I invoke Brynhild of the Northland, goddess of Sagittarius. I invoke Elo Egypt Nature of North America, goddess of Aquarius. Let the stars perform the maze dance of the zodiac. Now we see the maze dog outside the temple, which is a chain dog of, of consecutive spirals, the maze dog of Crete. The Panopscope Dacial, left to right, the Constellations Widdershin, the Companions Dacial, the whole company are joining in in circles going different ways, right over the huge castle ground, in front of the castle itself. Companions, let us feel the rainbow flow of energy to our being, so that we may shine like many colored stars, attuned to the music of the spheres. Feel your strength, the many rainbow flow of energy, feel, shine like the stars, but within you a psychic center, that are stars, your atoms are stars and planets, and so your spiritual body to glow like many jewels. We see the auras of others, not ourselves, the glory of trees. Others see our auras. So we are all part of the same body of the mother of Isis and Osiris, Lewis of the galaxy. Bonstead and Robertson give thanks for all the powerful energy coming from the star deity. We give thanks for all the wonderful powerful energy coming from the star deity. We give thanks in our hearts for all our problems that have passed away. We even feel healing. Feel this peace in yourself. What is the world around us? Not the lovely earth, but the world we create. So good. 
feeling. And the more serious feeling as the arch priest speaks to the We all need to pray the judgment of desires that we may attain the second world. Our earth has held faith in creation. Only Isis can help us save the eye of Horus, son of Isis and Osiris, to bring understanding to the soul we offer a mystery drama of a judgment. Let the trial of earth and its twin planet moon be presented. The whole company now leaves the altar and proceed in front of the castle itself. The priesthood stand aside while the Olympian gods, no less, stand up two great flights of steps before the castle gateway, as was done in ancient Egypt and in Greece. Here, the sacred side of the system to show a change is happening. Guardian Pluto summons the people to form a great circle round the ground, round the stage. Now we observe Mercury entering in yellow. He's holding forth his caduceus, a rod with two entwined serpents mounted by a winged disc. Companions of Olympus, of, of the cosmic hierarchy, hearken to Jupiter, father of God and men. Jupiter appears from within the castle, suddenly, unexpectedly, framed in the dark granite gateway. He is a majestical figure, wearing green, and the great Jupiter, sun rays palm, shows that he and Juno rule. We are here assembled to judge whether to accept the planets, Earth and Moon, as candidates for planetary initiation. Is it the will of our Olympian company that these should be summoned? Crowd court. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. Let Mercury, psychopompus, Guide of souls, conduct them before us. Visualize the scene. Mercury, guide of souls, conduct two most unexpected people before us with some half aggressive looking business man wearing a black suit, an old suit tie, very tight, tightly cropped hair, and a large pair of thorn rimmed spectacles. It has a neat little clean white handkerchief showing. The only slightest part note is his socks. And with him is a rather gentle girl, dowdy. She could be pretty, but her hair is hanging down in width, and she has an indeterminate blouse hanging over a skirt, which is held up by a safety pin. She has loose Sandals, but there's something engagingly innocent about her. She gazes with awe at the several gods, whereas the businessman was distinctly aggressive. Suddenly, one of the gods steps forward, no less than Saturn, wearing indigo colored robes and the sigil of Saturn at his pectoral. Know me a Saturn and Titan. Do you, Moon, seek to undergo the ordeal of initiation into the celestial company of planets? Planets are the offspring of the constellation. To the rebirth of initiation, you may attain a new sphere of being. Friend, I want you to pause here because I want you to wonder do you really want to refer yourself to initiation? on this. Rebirth is death, I think. 
We'll die anyway. Friend, we have decided whether or no we wish to receive spiritual initiation. The gentle, rather untidy moon tells us what she feels. Long have I dreamt of this offer, but not to gain greatness. I long only for fruitfulness, for the joy of caring for trees and creatures of every sort. Saturn turns to the Earth. What say you, Earth? Would you be a candidate for initiation to be rebound into a celestial company of planets? This does not seem disagreeable. Well, I haven't had any celestial company. I'm a planet already. As far as I know, what benefit would I get? You are but in the shadow of a planet, the shape of what we shall be, inhabited by ghostly denizens who are to transcend as a dream. But it, it is because your planetary dream has turned to nightmare that you need Planetia initiation. When evil overcomes good, free will is lost, and divine intervention take place in some form or another. You face corruption and have drawn the moon into like danger. The moon gazes at the sky. Already, though I have done no harm, I am poisoned by the creatures of Earth. Let us both be tried by the cosmic hierarchy. Gladly shall I endure the consequences. Nothing could be worse than my present pollution. It's all right for you. As you say, you haven't done anything. But that's easy enough when you haven't had the opportunity, the ability, or the power. But how do I know what will happen to me? In either case, win or lose. If I lose, they say I'll be corrupted, uh, which sounds unpleasant, uh, but not an entire surprise. That might be too bad. If I win, I'll get absorbed into the cosmic hierarchy, whatever that is. It wouldn't do the hierarchy any good. It would be the end of me. Uh, what happens if I refuse? And let things go on as they are, even if corrupt. Self-destruction. Huh. It seems I have no choice. Oh well, to dare, to do, and not to care about the consequences. That's me. <laughs> she can't say I'm a coward. Go ahead with the trial. Not that I like the supernatural. Let Earth accuse us and fall. To everyone's amazement, there's a gasp of horror because it's Venus, lovely Venus in green, who steps forward as Earth accuses us. Tragic it is, but I, Earth Mother Venus, could accuse him. I have brought him forth, yet I have no choice to save my other children. Polluted is my once lovely world. Silent as the spring, the air is so poisoned that birds fall in flight, and ships through the waves of dead fish, rainforests for themselves, and the wild creatures die in deserts. Animals are tortured to our knowledge. If Earth be admitted to our company, we might abuse the power entrusted to him. 
and break so great a destruction on those weaker than himself. Rather should earth be cleansed by the sacred elements of fire, air, and water, and life begin again in a better cycle. That earth defend us then forth and speak for him. There's another gasp of amazement because it's the aggressive talent of Mars in vermilion and gold, wearing the lamen of Mars, the arrow, who steps forth to speak for us. I speak for what I have could do. What use is the talent buried? Moon needs no defense, nor hath she any virtue born of struggle. Earth works long and hard entirely for his own benefit, and why not? Uh, this is the sort of, of goodness, for with Earth's limited consciousness, but to us no more than that of a gnat, he only knows God is himself. It is the only God he knows. He needs to experience the God in someone else, uh, say, moon, and he will become what he is intended to be, a practical custodian of his own creatures and plants. Noble companions of Olympus, I plead that Earth be a candidate for initiation. Not because he is worthy, we all know that he is not, but because he needs it. Let him face the ordeal and be educated by ourselves, not because of what he is, but for what he could be. But he would not abuse our powers. What would a repentant Earth be like? It is hard to imagine. Uh, may Neptune give us a vision of the Earth's possible apotheosis. I sing of the future of the earth and all that were therein. Behold, in your mind's eyes, the lofty cities arising with many colored towers. And still there are trees reaching into the sky. Flowery trees are bordered by a fish for streams, and wild geese roam at will and harm none. In halls of learning, men and women study the mysteries. And in fields laden with wood, trees, young people laugh and dance and sing. Those who practice the art of agriculture dwell in borrowed villages set amid fair hills, and lost within mighty forests and valleys between snowy mountains, grow magi, who commune with beasts and birds and nature spirits in the language of the deities, which is taught. They draw forth visions of a still nobler life to come. It is they who give me this vision. We shall, with all the company, see this in our mind's eye. Forget horrors in newspapers you read about. Imagine the earth as one day she shall be perfect. People gossip with disgust. The earth turns his back upon the assembly. Help me out. If I am reborn, I'll think of something a bit more interesting than that. Is there an accuser of the moon? There is none who will speak against thee. Hadn't we? It's as if something wonderful happens to the moon. She uh, seems to be filled with a, a spiritual beauty. I am reborn in life. A mystic joy sweeps through me. Yet I still long for fulfillment with Earth. I cannot leave him. We are twins. Don't let me drag you back from some fairy heaven you've dreamt up. I don't see this light you're talking about. In any case, I don't like the word repentance. But I do feel rather bad about what's happening under my auspices. So to speak. I don't like people. I much prefer animals. Uh, still, I, I like beauty. And a lot of children. Uh, I'll accept rebirth if offered when on one condition. People again gasp and so amazed at the impertinence of Earth. 
Jupiter rises in grandeur. When you strike a bargain with the gods. Of course. Even if I am initiated. No heaven for me. I'll stay where I am. Third from that son. And I with you. Fellow planets and stars, now is the time for us to consider our verdict. The fault of great and terrible reckoning is made, but some call the last judgment, the judgment of Osiris, of Christ, of humanity, and our fitness to be on earth. There is an assessment. Capricorn steps forth. He is wearing black and silver and looks wise. Hearken to Capricorn, the assessor. The star deities accept the moon as do the planets for none spoke against her. Moreover, she has received his, the desire, the divine light, a sign from heaven. It is left for us, therefore, to decide whether Earth shall also be accepted as a candidate for initiation into a celestial company. The planets have already spoken through Venus and Mars. Now, the starry constellation speaks. What we realize is more important for planetary beings of a physical and astral nature is lesser than stellar beings of the deity, realms of the divine. In silence as Virgo, in pure white and gold, wearing a wonderful golden tiara steps forth to speak. Surely she, the loving mother, mother of the corn, she, Demeter, will speak for poor earth. He advised counsel of Virgil, if he accepts earth, he is likely to fail the ordeal, and so be at a great loss for now. But if he were to pass the test, and receive our life help. We could make use it for selfish purposes and so contaminate our solar system and even beyond. This is terrible indeed. People whisper together and shake their heads. If Virgo can go on earth, who will help him? However, help is at hand. A very cheerful man with a, a curling brown beard, a laughing man with green leaves in his hair, no less than Sagittarius. When Sagittarius was the other side, and be daring rather than cautious. We would risk the danger of the abuse of power for a go to go. Earth united with moon could bring us all the riches of strength in harmony with gentleness. We will combine with awareness a passion and stillness. What are we to make of them? The whole company and all the crowd who are joined in for their or all roads of constellation, wonder what to do. And suddenly, from the castle itself, between the two pillars of the doorway, there appears Libra, a calm, cool maiden, holding the scales of perfect balance. I am Libra of the scales. Let us, with fair judgment, Meditate upon each side and bring forth a true verdict. Let us all meditate, and you, hysterically, spiritually, must also choose way up. Should Earth be candidate, for initiation, and so gain new powers, or would it be too dangerous for all the other species on our planet? Think, for you too to ask the vote. Humans were put on Earth look after, develop, and teach the other species entrusted 
to humanity's care. How have we fulfilled this trust? What could we do? Meditate. have contaminated the air, we have contaminated the earth, we have poisoned the water, we have misused fire, energy. We kill species, whole species every day, rainfall. But the goddess has given us nature. We can offer our art. I desire to do better. What do you think? The company are all seated now, meditating. Jupiter suddenly breaks the silence. That all who accept Earth as a candidate for initiation raise their right hand. All opposed? Let Mercury make the count. I declare that the A is happy. Earth is accepted. Now, for the first time, Earth wonders, is he himself worthy? He suddenly becomes aware of how nearly he lost the boat. Is he going to ask? Is he going to pray for help? Well, I'll give it a go. I'm always a risk taker. You people have your confidence in me. Well, maybe I can reform. Here, yeah, Aquarius speaks to Are you willing to receive help, even from a woman? Well, all right. Maybe just this one. I'll try it. Ah, but what a woman. Suddenly, a figure appears in the castle doorway. And she is Isis. She wears a garment covered with all the stars of the zodiac. And wears the hateful crown, the sun in the horns of the moon. She lifts up its hands and addresses earth and moon. I am Isis, mistress of all the elements, queen of those that are in heaven and those that dwell in Hades. I am goddess of enchantment. I'm also goddess of compassion. I declare that you, Earth, may receive divine inspiration. For now all your psychic centers are clogged. You are a creature of time, not of eternity. Here she puts out her hand over the head of Earth. Receive the power of the goddess through you. She now turns to Moon. Moon, you have been too acquiescent, and your weakness has been as dangerous as the violence of Earth. She now takes her hand, her left hand this time, and holds it over Moon. Receive the golden power of the goddess in your heart and plexus, that you may be as strong as a lioness. 
dust speaker rises and all falls forth is Zoe Isis. Zoe Isis. Zoe Isis. And as all glorify Isis, she turns her back and disappears again into the darkness of the castle as a stately vision. Aquarius steps forward, a beautiful woman in shades of blue, goddess of the new age. Hearken to Aquarius of the new aeon. We, the star deities, accept your choice. However, we had already decided upon our great judgment. Whether initiation be speedy or long delayed, all that is evil on earth and moon shall be dissipated and dissolved into the nothingness from which it emanates. But all that is good is part of eternal reality and shall be forever of all company. Aries, in brilliant vermilion and gold, steps forward and crowns earth with a laurel wreath. In token not of what you are, but of what you shall be, I, Aries, shepherd of the starry flock, crown you, earth, with the laurels of victory. Oh, Hail, Aries. Aries. Cancer in white, pale gray, and lavender comes forth and crowns the moon with flowers and berries. In token, not of what you were, moon, but of what you shall be, I, Cancer, who guarded the past aeons, Crown you with the flowers and berries of fruitfulness. Now, two young people step forward, a young boy and a girl. The girl speaks. In the name of Gemini, twin god and goddess, let the celestial company rejoice. The stars and planets are one. Isis and Osiris are one. Earth and moon shall be one in everlasting joy. Let us perform the dance of the new aeon. All make a spiral dance, linking the three circles of earth and moon, the palace of the stars, for all are interconnected in the spiral, and nobody in the universe is left out. Nothing, not even a hedgehog. judgment of Osiris and the compassion of Isis bring into harmony justice and peace within each mind and heart. When our time comes, may each of us awaken into our body of light while standing upon earth. So shall we see earth as it truly is, perfect. Go forth to the blessing of Isis. The Archpriest Lauren Sturden Robertson give thanks to the goddess Isis and the god Osiris and all the deities.
as they did. He then makes the sign of the ant and gives all the company his blessing. A vast virus database updated. I asked a blessing on the whole company. First piece makes the sign of the crook and snail in X. In the name of Osiris, judge of the living and the dead, may truth and justice prevail upon the earth for, it, for all its creatures. Go forth with the blessings of Osiris. company begin to make a procession round the ground, down a U wall, and towards the portico of the Temple of Isis itself, and begin to file in before the high altar of Isis of 10,000 names. There are prayers and thanks at this time of midsummer begins to sound faint as if we're in some sort of dream. We know that when they have visited the Holy Well, they will form a spiral up and out to have a midsummer feast. They will light a bonfire, a beautiful fire in a wilderness, and celebrate sun there as they did last evening but we begin to rise into the air we look down we watch the procession we see the grove of the wilderness and a bright fire with people tending it throwing wood on we see a feast your own time and place. Here we practice the rituals of eternity and so have you come back, back, glorified by the inner sun and the moon and the stars. Come back into the sky surrounded by the stars and Sirius will soon rise in the sun in July. You feel a tingling glow through your body, silver in your brow and head, gold in your heart. make a sound to bring you back. You're back in your own body feeling invigorated. I have been helped by Claudia and Thomas De Meyer, the last film, Scarlet and Fast in Germany, John Mahoney and Ema Monaghan, my dear brother Lawrence. Baraka, may you be blessed. 
by Isis and Osiris. Thank you.